really makes a muscle car a muscle car? That's what we're gonna try and find out today. I'm going to redesign the current Dodge Charger into more of a muscle car. But first of all, let's have a look at the Charger's history here, starting with the 1966 model up here. And what's interesting about this era of the Charger is the proportions of the car, but also keep in mind the graphics as we go through these, the, these generations up until today's generation and how much of the graphics has actually stuck with the Charger up until today's version. So we have clear shoulder lines here in the 1966 version and you can see that the greenhouse is body colored here and it's also have a very thick C pillar right here or B pillar in this case and you have this typical 1966 line in the door in, in the window as well at this corner right here which we don't have on the coming generation so let's switch up and go down to 1968 and you can see that this is the charger muscle car that we're all used to seeing this is the, at least for me this is the one i think about the 1968 and the 1969 these are the chargers when i think about a muscle car charger the 68 and the 69 are definitely the ones i think of and i want you to keep in mind and remember this shoulder line here because it's getting interesting when we go into today's version so look at these lines right here we have this shoulder going into some graphics here in the door and then we have the the front fender shoulder line starting from the top of that graphics and then stretching into front graphics of the car. Between the 66 and 68, the big change here is in the proportions. I think the 68, it became much more squished in the front end. They squished the front end and they widen it at the same time. So you can see here that this looks, at least the graphically, it looks a little bit thicker and uh, less wide and less imposing than the 68. And of course, going down then to the 69. The, the key difference is where you, how you can see a 69 from the 68 is if you look in the front you now have this division right here which I kind of like I think it looks cool without having this massive intake in the front just have something to break that part up and I think they did it nicely with this facelift here for the 69 version and here we can clearly see even more clearly see that uh, we have the same kind of shoulder line as the 68 going into the graphics here and then we have the same kind of shoulder line here as we have on the 68 model as well and compared to the 66 we now have black rooftops or black um, greenhouses right here. And we still have this fuselage type of body that was so typical for this era and which I really like about this era. It wraps around the car and then you have the wheels kind of sticks into the fuselage. Of course, a very traditional styling of the era and specifically when it comes to muscle cars. But then in 2006, something drastic happened to the Dodge Charger and it became a four-door sedan all of a sudden. We still have some sort of muscle-ness in the styling here with this shoulder right here and this long sweeping line going into a very vertical front end which is a must if, you have, if you're designing a muscle car. You also have very simplistic geometric style of the greenhouse similar to what we have before but to me this is nowhere near the old 60s and 70s chargers that that uh, that was pure muscle car because think of it like this what exactly is a muscle car to me a muscle car it, it puts the focus on where it matters for the the type of car and for muscle cars it's obviously the engine it needs to have a lot of power a big engine we don't really care about the luxuries of interior commodities or features that you might want to have uh, that makes you comfortable or something like that we don't care about that what we care about is big engines in the front the experience of driving this machine and also the the rumble and the shakiness of of the car and all of this has to come at a a decent price you can't break the bank buying a muscle car that's the whole point with it it's a lot of power for a very reasonable price and when it comes to the styling muscle cars needs to have a specific styling as well it can't just be an overall styled piece of machinery or design it needs to have some specific parameters for it to be a muscle car and when we talk when we go into the redesign here I want to talk about the current muscle cars and how there's in my opinion Design-wise, only one muscle car left that is uh, manufactured in today's world. And I think you know which one that is if you compare the designs of them. And then we have the final iteration here with the 2000. I think this came out in 2015. Now, what I want to show you here is this line right here. So we have still have this original shoulder line of the 68 and 69 going into the same type of graphic. We don't have this divider here in the graphics. And then we have the front shoulder line and the front fender line 
stick it in right here going from the top part of the graphics just like we had on this part piece right here and I think that's a cool transition into the modern design taking design cues graphically from the old ones and implementing it in the 2015 and I really honestly I don't think this is a bad design I think the charger looks really badass but it just doesn't feel muscle enough to me specifically now that it's a four-door uh, sedan so what I want to do is redesign this take the original design features of what a muscle car is such as the geometric design the very boxy shape and the vertical front end with very horizontal graphics in the front so what we're actually going to do here I'm gonna take this wide body red I think this is a scat pack if I'm not mistaken and what I want to do is just sketch over this and make it into a muscle car so when you see this curvature here I don't want this curvature what I want is to have it be straight this graphics in the front and I want to have a straight opening right here with these uh, headlights going like this as well very geometric very static looking to me this is a little bit too overstyled for a muscle car it might look good on a regular sedan but if we're gonna have a muscle car we need to think about the geometric shape of things so I want to kind of stretch this corner stretch it this way let it go something like like this and I think that will connect then to this corner up here we have some line flow going into the front graphics of the car there obviously still want to keep this type of graphics that we have right here inside because I think this is a great example of taking the old graphics from the 60s 68 and 69 applying it onto a new car obviously if we're going to make this into a two-door we need to definitely shorten or lower and everything make the greenhouse a lot smaller than what it is and shoot it back this way so we have more of a longer hood stretching forward and I think it's going to look Look really cool with these new geometric graphics that, that, that we're gonna put in the front and this is gonna be a, a car that I would love to see and um, be made by Dodge even though they do the Challenger I mean the Challenger is a fantastic design but still I, it's a Charger name I want to bring back the Charger name to a two-door beast of a muscle car so with that said let's jump into Photoshop here continue and let's see how this redesign is going to turn out before we do that go to the sketchmonkey.com and pick up a t-shirt or a hat or why not one of each now that we're running a buy to get ten dollars off promo check it out on the sketchmonkey.com so let's talk muscle cars here and let's talk modern muscle cars I've made videos on this before I think I made a video on talking about the Camaro the Mustang and the uh, Challenger which one to you if you think about it which one of them would you think is is a proper looking muscle car there really only is one left the other two are angled more towards uh, sports cars now because they, they they want to be performance cars as well as muscle cars they don't stick with one thing and they try to be uh, they, they are very good at what they do they are very good on the track both the Mustang GT350 the GT500 then you have the Camaro is very good at track as well but they don't just don't look muscly the Challenger not as good on track in the corners but that's fine that's exactly what the Challenger is supposed to be and you can by just by looking at it you can tell that it's not gonna take corners as well as the GT350 for example it's just not but it's gonna be faster in a straight line and that's exactly why I love the Dodge Challenger both in the performance I don't care that it doesn't take corners well it's not what it's supposed to do it knows what it is it's a muscle car it goes in a straight line very fast has a lot of power of course specifically in the Demon version with the slicks in the rear and that's why I that's kind of what I want cars to be I want them to be separated in their separate categories they don't have to be good at everything and that's I, I think that's the problem today when we have minivans being uh, being advertised as sporty and uh, uh, fun to drive I mean maybe they are but it, they don't necessarily have to be I, mean, I, I don't think they should be advertised as such instead what I want to see is being them being advertised for what a minivan is supposed to be roomy you can put your whole family and the dog in the back go on picnics and stuff like that why would you even consider talking about sportiness and when you're talking about a minivan and that's kind of the, the same kind of feeling I get with the Mustangs is not and the Camaro I get they're, they're not uh, as um, as extreme as talking about a minivan being sporty and taking corners well but at the same time it, 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 I, I wish they stuck to the muscle car ness like the Dodge Challenger has done up until today 
And that's also why the Challenger is clearly outselling. I'm, I'm not sure if it's outselling the Mustang at the moment, but it did at one point, even though the Mustang has been facelifted and updated, the Challenger has been around since 2009, I think, in its current version. We only got a facelift with LEDs. That's basically the, the big change that they did while the Mustang and the Camaro they've come out with new generations of their cars but the dodge challenger is still very much keeping up with the competition and obviously outselling at least the camaro i know that and it's a good reason for that people want these old muscle cars back and that's what i want to try and get a vibe off with this redesign so squaring off the front end and make the make it square, square squaring it off making the graphics horizontal make it very geometrical in the front end very muscle car -y, and of course at the same time reducing it to two doors i think that's that's all we got to do to make this into a beast of a machine. I, I'm not sure if this would look better like this or if the Challenger still looks better than this. I'm, I think the Challenger is such a spot on design that it, it doesn't matter if they continue to build the same car for 10 more years. I'll, I'll be happy with that because it's such a cool design. The new, the, the, I can't call it new, but the, the current Challenger. That's one of these cars that one of the best retro inspired cars such as the Bronco as well and then if, we know, if we're talking about exotics we have the Lamborghini Countach it seems to be a trend now and I'm really happy for that because I think cars manufacturers they can they they can take so much inspiration by going back looking at the past what models were really cool and then try to create modern versions of them because people who grew up with those cars back in the day they were young kids teenagers they now have the money to buy something like this that was that is built and inspired has the spirit of the old original model anyway that's it for this video thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one take care